When you fall down, you have to get back up. When is it gonna happen to me? It's hard to have patience. I mean, it is. If you really want it bad enough, you cannot skip steps. Be grateful for what you got. If you really want to get on that grind and you don't like your job, I'm still cooking their bacon. Because you're always going to be wondering what if. Damn, I'm only here for one reason and one reason only, though. Patience starts now. Thank you for tuning in to episode two of Patience, the podcast, with your hosts, Donnie D and Sammy G. Very special guest. We have DMVs. Oh, very young, very young, legendary, filmmaker, producer, actor extraordinary. Actor extraordinary. Glenn Nelson's in the house, everybody. Oh, well, hello. Thank you for having me on Patience the Podcast. Sammy, how we doing tonight, my man? We're doing very well, man. Doing lovely. Hey, good to hear from you, Sammy. Of course. This is great to have you on the show, my man. So we're going to kick things off here. Episode two, uh, still, still working out a lot of the kinks. Uh, podcasting across multiple states is not exactly uh, my favorite uh, activity to be doing, but I got some some, uh, some of my best people here working this uh, podcast thing out with me. So Glenn, why don't you go ahead and start us off and uh, give us a little insight in who you are, uh, what you're all about, what you're doing in uh, your respective fields. Uh, we want to get into your, into your world today. Well, yeah, sure. I've been, uh, I guess, a struggling filmmaker, um, actor, producer, I'd say for the last 15 years. I've been full-time freelance maybe for the last 10 years, uh, working for myself. I have uh, my own LLC, Dead On Pictures, my own production company. Um, Pretty much been hustling, grinding, especially with like the whole YouTube market and online markets, online streaming. I've been... um, trying to break out into the podcasting field as well, Uh, motivational stuff, current affairs, trying to fit into different niches and genres of pop culture and, and, you know, the, the classic geek four thing, movies, comics, uh, video games, I guess, uh, music as well. And pro wrestling, me and a couple of buddies are big pro wrestling fans. I know, Donnie isn't, but, uh, yeah, um, broke out into acting maybe about four years ago, started acting, got on quite a few TV shows, those crime, those crime shows on ID and reels, uh, luckily got typecasted as a, as a detective or a cop. So that kind of, uh, guarantees work because everyone's always looking for cops and detectives and military roles and things of that nature. So. So Sam, I, I don't know how many uh, you know how many filmmakers you've had a chance to work with uh, shooting some of your videos, but I'm curious, um, Glenn, where did you get your start in filmmaking? What is where did it all start for Glenn in terms of, you know, I know Spielberg has a story about how he started when he was really young filming things as a kid. Where where did you get your your original idea that I want to be a filmmaker one day? I think for me, I, I got lucky. I grew up in a time where movies such as Pulp Fiction, I was 14 when I first saw Pulp Fiction. I think I was 15 when I first saw Heat with De Niro and Pacino. Um, Swingers came out Swingers came out in 96. And Rush Out, uh, I'm sorry, Rumble in the Bronx with Jackie Chan, his first major uh, American language film came out in 96 also. So it was, it was just like a plethora of, of films, especially the rise of independent films, um, like the new rogue filmmaking, I, I like to call it, in the in the early to mid '90s, the Matrix came out in '99. So, I would think I was blessed with not only having seen all these '80s movies and having fallen in love with movies like Back to the Future, Teen yes. Wolf, all the Michael J. Fox classics, all the Schwarzenegger yeah. and Stallone classics, yeah. but then. And the Bruce Will, like the Diehards and the Rambos and the Rockies and the and the Aliens and the Predators, you know, I grew as a kid. I grew up with those, but as a as a maturing teenager, you know, finding his mark and looking for, you know, where where I fall in line, you know, in society or what I want to do, those were more the groundbreaking films for me. It was all the '90s films, like I said, you know, Swingers, Heat, Tarantino, 
Tarantino's films, um, yes. Robert Rodriguez, you know, uh, the makers, Rodriguez and Tarantino and, and, um, Sam, where, where, where are you? I don't mean to cut you off, Glenn. Sam, where, where are you on, uh, on filmmaking and, and, and some of the movies that have inspired you musically? Have you uh, heard of any of the guys that Glenn just mentioned? Oh, yeah, man, for sure. Quinn Tarantino is by far, you know, very interesting character. Um, in fact, one of my favorite movies by him was actually one of the worst movies, they say, that he ever created was um, Death Proof. Um, and I really love that one, man. Um, I actually, um, I got into film, I got into film a few years ago. Um, I like got into this video production class and I've always just been uh, almost do it yourself type of guy. So, um, when we started doing like vlogs and music videos and things of that nature, um, in the beginning, I used to just edit and all and all that type of stuff myself. Um, I mean, there's like a ton of movies that I love, but um, I'm really in love with like the process of like editing and like the story, like, you know, writing the stories and um, really just the music that goes behind it too as well. For a long time, I uh, wanted to be a music supervisor, which, you know, I still do believe um, eventually I'll have a bunch of songs and movies one day. Um, but yeah, I mean that like film and music and things of that nature, they all go hand in hand. What do you, I'm curious when you say music supervisor, because we got a, a you know, a film director, actor extraordinaire here, uh, DMV's finest right here on the line with you. Just, just extraordinary. You, you can cut out filmmaker and actor and producer. And you could just say Glenn Nelson extraordinaire. That's this, this legend that we have sitting, <laughs> sitting with us in tonight is, uh, is, is somebody who I respect a great deal. And I'm curious, when you say musical supervisor, do you mean like, uh, you know, a producer, a manager? Do you mean like somebody who's curating, you know, events? Like what, what did you have in mind when you said that was something you were interested in when you were younger, Sam? So the music supervisor is the one who essentially makes a phone call to the artist and pretty much gets the permission and rights to use so-and-so's song and what, whatever motion picture is being used. So I wanted to go ahead and do something like that, build a relationship with artists um, and, you know, let them know, hey, we want to use your new song or your latest single and the new, you know, Karate Kid movie, God. whatever, stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, really just, like, knowing all the legal, all the legalities, um, you know, and th that's all, just getting rights to use it and as well, you know, letting people know the percentage and things of that nature, how much it's going to cost, how much you're going to get, what we expect, and things of yeah, that nature. Yeah, sounds like Sammy G. Esquire is somewhere in the rapper's future. As, as you all know, uh, Patience the Podcast is really about pushing forward this idea of patience uh, for everybody involved in business and entrepreneurialism and, and creative, you know, lines of work and... Uh, we're really curious, Glenn, uh, what some of your bigger influences uh, were in terms of, you know, when you first got started, whether, you know, it was getting through school as a filmmaker, whether it was, uh, I know you used to work for Discovery uh, uh, down there in uh, downtown Silver Spring as one of your earlier uh, ventures in your career. Um, we've also worked on National Treasure 2. Yep, you and I did, yeah. Back in the day, uh, we did a little bit of... Uh, uh, some PA gig and PA for, work, yeah, yeah. Which uh, I don't know if you guys uh, tuning in tonight uh, have seen the movie National Treasure with Nick Cage. Uh, it came out like seven thousand years ago. Uh, <laughs> it was like twenty years ago. So for the younger crowd out there, the younger millennial group, um, this was uh, at the time one of the best movies about DC and some of the history and masonry and stuff. Um, Freemasons, yeah, all that. Yeah, that you, sort of. Deal. You want to tell us a little bit about uh, that experience, Glenn? How we both stumbled upon the set there. Uh, so basically, you know, half. It, it's not, you know, the, the there's a lot of jokes, I guess, in Hollywood. It's not what you know, who you know. Sometimes it's not who you know; it's who you blow. But uh, in uh -oh. this in this case, you know, luckily it was all about who I know. I knew somebody. I knew two people. I worked on an independent film as a first assistant director on this one in the short independent film, two of those folks ended up being PAs on National Treasure 2. They got me a gig as a PA on National Treasure 2. 
And then I put in a reference for Don, Donnie, Donnie D, um, to, to then get on National Treasure 2. And I'll never forget, and this is where my patience was definitely getting tested with Donnie D, uh -oh. where I said, reference my name, say I referenced you, say, say I, <laughs> I referenced you. And he gets there and he purposefully did not say my name because he didn't want to come off like a douchebag or a schmuck. You know, he's like, no, nah, I want to get it on, on, on my own <laughs> accord or whatever you, whatever you said. I forgot what you said. Kind of idealistic streak. And he on. never called you back. Right. <laughs> and, then, and I'm like, why didn't, you re why didn't you mention my name? That's all you had to do. That's right. Because the first thing I did to get on the film was I mentioned, uh, what was it, Bob, Bob and, and uh, Crystal's name. And boom, I'm freaking, I'm working on the film. So the concept of name dropping was brand new for me at the time. So I didn't know I needed to mention Glenn's name as a connection. Um, and so I, the first thing I did was I jumped in the trailer and I said, did my boy, my boy Don come in interview? He goes, uh, yeah, D uh, Donnie D, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's my boy, by the way. If, uh, definitely bring him on. He's, he's good. He's, and Don, and so this, and, and like five minutes after I went and talked to this guy in the trailer, I get a text from Don saying, hey, he finally got back to me. I'm like, I, I, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. And so, yeah, that's where, like, my patience was tested. Like, am I going to lose it? So <laughs> for, <laughs> that was definitely a moment. That was, that was, that was definitely a memory that, uh, that definitely goes down to the books as one of the, one of the earlier moments of my, uh, you know, entrepreneurial ventures in entertainment. Do you have any advice uh, for any of the up-and-coming filmmakers, actors, future screenwriters, you know, producers in the film industry, when you're trying to get a gig, when you're trying to jump onto a, a set of a big feature film like National Treasure 2, uh, do you have any advice for them in terms of what the best way to go about uh, that sort of, you know, engagement with, you know, somebody who's never been involved in a major picture and they're a film student and they don't know, really know, where do I begin? How do I get my first star? How do I sneak in? How do I jump on set here with some big wigs? Well... The kids today, uh, no offense, Sammy G, have it way easier with the apps and the internet and uh, productionhub.com, staffmeup.com, Craigslist, Backstage. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something. Castingnetworks.com, uh, dragonupconnects.com. I mean, there's so many. And uh, did I already say Backstage? Yeah. And... Uh, there's, and, and half of those websites have apps on their phones now. And so back when I was struggling, it was word of mouth. I think we had Craigslist, maybe Google, maybe Yellow Pages or uh, classifieds in the newspaper. And when I graduated college back in 04, you know, Google, and I think Craigslist was kind of blowing up in MySpace Things of that nature. So there was a right. lot of word of mouth. There was yeah. a lot of like, hey, you were good at this in school. And my boy who know my, my, my boy's boy's boy needs right. a PA. And, you know, a lot of a lot of classifiers were sent to schools. But now, I mean, it's way easier. It's, it's all about just knowing about these apps, putting together a headshot, putting together a resume, right. uh, a crew resume, an actor's resume, putting together, putting together a headshot or putting together you know, a production reel of some of your earlier work, whether it be student work, um, if it's music, you know, you, you got to put together um, a SoundCloud or a, or a YouTube channel of your music, whatever the case may be. Right. I mean, with technology today, it's way easier to set it's up one click an online, on, online, online profile. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it was a lot of hard work. It, it was a lot of hustling and grinding. And... <laughs> I went full-time freelance in 09, okay. and that one, it was just nonstop, and technology was getting better. I was able to reach out to more people. I was able to send more people links to my work online, and then resumes, and PDFs, and, right. and getting headshots. And then, and now, it's way easier, kind of, tech, uh, reaching out with to technology people. and all these advances that we have these days at our fingertips. With social media, with social marketing, with right. networking, it's way easier. And so it's way easier for me to reach out to people out in California and, and Oklahoma and Colorado right. and Florida and Atlanta and New York and just send them all my stuff right away. Um, but, yeah. So now you know we've got some kids that are listening. They're saying, you know what? 
Nelson, like I, I got my headshots together, man. Like I, I did that. I sent it out. But now they want me to come to L.A. Now they want to meet me or they want me to fly to New York or to Atlanta. They want me to come to Texas. They want me to like they're like they're ready to meet me. They want me to do the audition. I put in the work online. But now I got to somehow get money to pay for this plane ticket, you know, to go here and there and or whatever the case may be. Or my parents don't believe in me and being an actor. They just want me to go to school. Yeah, they think acting is cool. Maybe I can possibly do it, but they just want me to just just stay in school right now, you know, or whatever the case is. What do you what are we saying to those kids out there who really, you know, for the most part are trying, um, but they're still in a in a rut where like they can't make that next step. They're not they can't get that next jump um, to get their feet wet. Yeah, like I said, with today's technology, there's so many, for example, there's, I don't know how many channels, just thinking cable and not online streaming, just thinking cable, there's probably 2,000 channels on the cable box now. And then there's probably, I don't know, 30 streaming networks, Crackle, Netflix, Hulu, Prime. I mean, who else is right? Who else, who else is making original content now? I mean, Netflix is, I remember when Netflix just sold DVDs, rented DVDs through the mail. Now they're making original content. There's so many networks, whether they're online streaming or whether they're uh, network cable-based, um, that there's so many gigs out there. And with today's technology, you know, it's not necessary to drive. Some, 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 some auditions want you to come all the way out to New York or come all the way out to Atlanta for an in-person audition. Some people still want that. But a lot of these new, smart, technologically advanced people want video submissions. There's a, there's a lot of people that, you know, if you're an actor and you're in, you know, bumfuck West Virginia, but you want to audition for something, you can sit in front of your computer in front of a webcam and they'll email you the script and you self-submit, you self-audition yourself in, in your home studio, in your home office recording yourself on your webcam, you upload the video to Dropbox, Google Drive, YouTube, what have you, you send them the link, you share it with them digitally, you know, the video file. And that's, and, and there's a lot of gigs hiring that way with online, so, with online self-submissions, uh, online self-submit auditions. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. That's a great DIY, that's a great DIY yeah. for sure. Um, what I do want, well, what I do want people who are listening to take out of it, though, is if you are in fucking bumfuck West Virginia or wherever the fuck you are, you know, honestly, if you want to live, if you want to live your dream, you have to be around people that are also doing the things that you want to do. So if you're in bumfuck West Virginia and none of your friends want to be actors or even trying or attempting to do anything in the entertainment industry, then you have to somehow get from bumfuck West Virginia to a place that will go ahead and propel you to the next level. Um, the internet is great. The internet is very great for sure. We can do so much to the internet, but it's never going to stop the actual success and the mindset and the motivation and the drive that you get from surrounding yourself around the circle of people that have been in the industry for 20, 30, 40 years or people that are out there on the grind every single day. So honestly, I think anyone who's actually trying to be the next Will Smith or even just wants to be on a little small Netflix show, you have all of these mediums to where like you're not hopeless. So you can't, there's no, there's no excuse for you not to fucking be doing anything. So you definitely can be sending in these video submissions like Nelson is saying. Um, but I think that the, the next step is if you can, if you have a job, if you're in college, if you have any sort of way of getting money, you need to get this money, save and look at investing in a way to whether it's like how I was taking my, my trips, my weekend trips to Atlanta, you take a weekend trip to New York or Los Angeles and you put in your time and you go to those casting calls and you do the casting calls for the weekend. Um, or even just 
move or, or even just move like that's I know, what, that's what I just say. That, I, move. You know, or, or just move take that leap of faith and just move what's stopping you you know i mean and, and I, absolutely i absolutely agree that's exactly what i was going to say is you know there's only so much you can do on a weekend trip because guaranteed you if you're just going to go there for a weekend oh man i'm going to go check out you know such and such casting and then i'm going to c- check out such and such artist and talent and for a weekend and that's going to turn into bar hop and that's going to turn into you know uh you know beach bumming and then boom next thing you know it's sunday night it's time to go home if you really want to if you're really about it there cannot be a plan b there cannot be a backup because if there is a backup if there if there is a backup you're going to back up to the backup there has to be you know only one plan plan a and that is what you want to do in life and it's and if you hate your job and you and, and you're thinking I'm a bounce to New York. I mean, and, and 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 believe me, I was definitely stuck in a situation for a while where I couldn't leave anywhere permanently. I was able to travel a lot, gig by gig. Luckily, like I said, internet and this and that and the other. But I couldn't leave for good, just drop everything and bounce to New York and LA for a little while. And eventually, I got to that point. But I I had already built an image, and a brand a, and a brand. Right and a reputation and uh, a small business here where I'm, I'm able to operate out of here in, in Bethesda, Maryland. I can, if, and if, and I can book or Chicago, but I can book gigs, right. but I can book gigs that travel me out. Right. Because like I said, I already have enough of an acting resume. I have already have enough of a production resume and real and acting real to where people can see what I've done before. And they're like, okay, we're willing to fly you out here or there. Or we'll, we're willing to uh, cover expenses. We can't fly you out, but if you drive, we'll cover that. You know, things of that nature. And I'm willing to drive to Atlanta. I'm willing to drive to New York or even Connecticut for this gig, for that gig. Maybe not Chicago. Definitely got to fly me to Chicago. Yeah, you or, better or places get some, that distance. They got to pay for some of that shit, right? But there, there cannot be a plan B. And so if someone's thinking like, I'm going to go hit up New York for a week and network. You might as well just move to New York and make. Right. That is definitely, it's definitely not going to, yeah, it's definitely not going to happen in, in, in a week for sure. And and for for a lot of people, when I talk about those, those trips that I made to Atlanta guys, I actually knew I had people that I knew in Atlanta. So I didn't. I wasn't going out there winging it, hoping, expecting somebody to go. But what I'm saying is, if you guys have friends, if you guys got family members, if you have a buddy that you went to college with, or you went to high school, and he's in college in L.A. right now, or New York, or Atlanta, or something where you're not, and you're still stuck in Colorado, or you're still wherever you are, you know, and you really want to take your shit to the next level. I mean, go cow chop for you know couch hop a little find a job i mean if you're around my age from 20 to fucking 30 you know what i'm saying you got fucking time and this is where patience comes in you have time you just need to be patient but you also have to put in the grind you have to put in the work Um, you gotta really be willing to just eat a little bit of dirt especially in your 20s and 30s when literally like you said all you have is time you've got to be willing to say all right you know, like in Glenn's situation or your situation, when you've got to get back to work, Glenn can't necessarily jump and move to New York like I was able to do. It was never easy for me, but jumping on someone's couch for a week or two, trying to figure out how you can work on an arrangement, get a few more roommates, figure out if you can get five people shoved into a tiny apartment, live a lot less comfortably, eat a little bit of shit, but figure out how you can maximize your impact in terms of getting opportunities. Because I think what a lot of people get stuck with is, I know for me personally, when I moved to New York and I was doing my thing there, it was, I have to have everything, like I have to have my own room and I have to have easy access to the subway and I have to have money to go spend on the weekend. I think if I could go back now, I'd probably say, like the first apartment I had living over a Thai restaurant with a, you know an old buddy of mine from Jersey at the time, um, we had the right mindset when we got there. We, we shoved into this tiny apartment above a restaurant that was playing techno music on Saturday and Sunday night. We couldn't sleep, but we struggled enough to know that when we're moving the city, we were humble enough to know that we got to save and we got to work. Now, I did that because I needed a job and I needed to pay rent. But if I had kept that mindset for the next five years I lived there, 
instead of upgrading the apartment, instead of moving into Washington Heights or moving closer to Brooklyn or, you know, moving closer to Williamsburg, because that's where all the, the hot music or the hot this or the hot that was. I think making that sacrifice and eating a little bit of dirt saves you money, gets you an opportunity if you needed to hop to Atlanta to go do it comfortably for a few more days, but giving up, you know, the extra room you're going to have by having six roommates in like a tiny apartment, you're able to really concentrate your effort. If you're serious about this hustle, this is not for everybody. Having a dream like this is going to require sacrifices, which I know I didn't fully appreciate in my early 20s because I just figured you got to be in the right city. While Glenn sat back and built his brand here in D.C., you know, got the gigs, built his, you know, his his knowledge set and network large enough that by the time we've hit today, he's able to hop, you know, onto a plane in Chicago or Atlanta and spend a weekend and not feel rushed, not feel, you know, like his his bank account is hurting because he stood still and stayed, you know, stayed the grind out in his original city. So that's one way. And then, you know, for me, it was moving to another city and trying it that way. And for you, Sam, it's it's hopping in and out of, of different places when you need to go to record an album. Sam, I wanted to ask you, um, do you have any experience with, uh, in terms of like shooting videos and stuff, do you have any advice for, because you said you did a little bit of the video stuff when you were younger as well, do you have any advice for people who are up and coming and, and whether the rappers or singers and are really trying to get uh, some of the video uh, content done, shooting videos, making connections in that way? I know you've got people down in Atlanta that help you do your thing. Which way do they go? How do they get, you know, access to good, uh, you know, production producers, uh, you know, people who are just shooting music videos. I know Glenn's done a lot of music videos, but he's done things uh, in filmmaking as well. What are some of the tactics that you've been able to, uh, you know, fully utilize in, 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 you know, in your career thus far? So, dude, YouTube, man, YouTube is the way to go. You can like literally go in there and type in whatever you want to learn. So, like, I had a buddy who was helping me. We both invested 400, 400 a piece. We saved up some money, whatever. Um, even if you don't have a buddy helping you, you can put in, you can save $250. You can save 500 bucks. Go get yourself a camera. Go get yourself a, a, a GoPro. I think one of the GoPros or like one of the cheapest ones are around 250 to $300. You go out there, act ask a friend like I did. I asked someone who had never shot any music videos, never even took a single picture, never even thought about considering this as a career path or anything of that nature. But they seen my drive. They seen how excited it made me. And they just, they just wanted to help, you know, and any real friends, any real people around you um, that admire you or, or respect you are going to want to help you in any way that they can. So always ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Stay humble. And one of the most important keys is do it yourself and don't try to be fancy about it. Just right. fucking do it. Perfect. Use what you got and just do yeah. it and then put it out right. there and then just, just make it happen. Um, there are so, there's so many things that I, like, I wanted to do um, for so many videos that I just couldn't do, but I didn't let, let that cripple me. So you're going to have ideas that you can't necessarily do yet. You have, you have things right now. And if you're a dreamer, you have, you have a vision, you have all these ideas, but you have to start with what you can do. That's what you want to start with first. Not saying that your dreams and your ideas aren't possible and that you won't be able to one day work up to those things. But again, you have to have patience to use everything that you have now. So when you, if you can't afford a GoPro or anything of that nature right now and you have a smartphone, if you have an Android, you have a Samsung, you have an Apple, an iPhone, which most people have an iPhone or a Samsung, you can go out and ask a buddy of yours, hey, record me. And from there, you can download like the iMovie app. You can download any movie editing app. Um, I know like the Mac comes with, you know, pre I, iMovie for free. Um, many, you know, you can get Adobe Premiere. You can get a lot of things for Roger. free um, yep. to make, you know, to make things work. And you go on YouTube and you just you put in how to edit a music video, how to edit on Adobe Premiere, how to edit, you know, 
on um, Final Cut Pro. Um, and essentially, I think that's most important. It's like we're talking about dreams here, guys. Like it's not going to be easy. Like we, like you're trying to do something that only 1% of people ever get to do. 1% out of everybody. Right. And that's – Depending on your ethnicity, like me being an African-American, we're, we're 1% of the 1%. So you're literally trying to win the lottery almost, right. you know, like do almost do the impossible. Um, but it's, I, I think it's, it's too important. Like you mentioned earlier to not surround yourself with the right people. So getting on YouTube, uh, you know, figuring out how to scrap together money to get a camera together, buying that first MacBook or getting that first you know, piece of uh, recording software and then surrounding yourself with the right people, I think will save you a long time down the long run. You've got to find the people who are as passionate about, about your particular ambition in whatever respective field that they're trying to be successful in. But you can't find somebody who, who is, is trying to be, you know, super, super famous or super, super this and that. I think one of my favorite, uh, you know, sayings, Will Smith says that, you know, the whole patience concept is really, it boils down to laying one brick a day and then one brick a day compounded over 15 years. If you're starting at 20, by the time you're 35, that's 365 bricks a year times 15 years, you've got a massive wall. So whether it's going on YouTube, whether it's surrounding yourself with the next ambitious in person and then cutting, right? Editing your circle, your immediate circle and replacing that one person who just isn't cutting it for you, who isn't inspiring you, who isn't forcing you to grow and forcing yourself to find, our, unfortunately this is pretty cold hearted, a replacement for that person is, is so, so underestimated and so under talked about who you have around you. You have to audit your circle. You definitely have to audit, audit your circle. When, when was it? Have you had to audit your circle? When was the last time that you had to audit your circle, really? Like when, when, when you were doing, when you were trying to pr pursue your craft, I mean, w was there ever a time that, that you looked around and you were like, Hey, wait a minute. I can't, I can't keep fucking with so-and-so. I can't, I can't continue to communicate with so-and-so as much as I've been communicating with them because they don't see my vision or my oh, dream. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, my circle, basically, the only friends that I have, half of them are the ones that I work with professionally. And the only friends I have are pretty much all my groomsmen coming up uh, uh, at my wedding uh, June 23rd of this year. I only have six groomsmen. A <laughs> this guy's getting married here in two weeks, by the way. I only have, thank you. But I only have six rooms, and two of them are family, four of them are, four of them are friends, and two of them I work with on a regular productive basis. I, I, have, I probably had a huge, huge audit of, like you said, of my circle. Probably, I want to say, between 2012 and 2014, I started, you know, cutting a lot of people off. Um, there was a major audit in 2010, I want to, uh, maybe 2009, I want to say. And then there was another major audit, I think, between 2012 and 2014. And it pretty much got down to Donnie D, uh, my other boy, Techfall. And there's a couple of new cats in their circle that, you know, I know a lot of people are on the grind and everybody needs to take the paying gig first. And so there's this major working around of schedules. And so some, some of them might cancel last minute. And I think it's, and, and like, uh, and like you, I even think it's kind of unique that the, the whole basis behind the podcast is patience, patience, the podcast. I mean, I think the most important aspect of patience is having patience with people generally and patience, mm. patience with yourself generally, but to be impatient, and to be harping on someone who's wasting your time, you know, that's a waste of time where you should be patient with the overall big picture and cut out the jackasses, cut out the phonies and, you know, you know, recast them, recrew them, you know, and, and, and re, uh, you know, do, do a whole new re realigning of your circle. That's where the patience comes in when they're, I, I, think, I think everybody wants to bring their buddies along with them. But at the end of the day, this is a fucking business, right? Like at the end of the day, 
I want to bring my crew with me. Like everybody wants to bring their entourage, but if someone's weighing you down, Sam, I know you had to go through something like this recently uh, with some of your closer uh, buddies. Me and Glenn have lost a mutual friend who we used to work with and know, and uh, it sucks. It's icy. It's not easy to do. But if you're serious about this career, you will not, number one, as Eddie Murphy put it, you cannot make room or much room, if any room at all, for a plan B aside from paying your bills. And you cannot not audit your circle because this industry is going to cut you out. Right. I mean, you're, you're going to have people that are going to make you look bad. And you got to cut those people out because if they make you look unprofessional, I mean, that that's going to go a long way. You got, I mean, I've had guys on set. I've been, I've been acting on set with, you know, it, 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 like I said, in the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia area, um, it's kind of a good thing to be a big fish in a small pond. The, the problem is you start acting in these gigs with a lot of the same people. You start getting familiar with them. You start getting chummy, chummy with them. And then, and then sometimes they start acting a full on set and they try to drag you into that. And it's like, yo, bro, we're on set. I mean, you know, when, when, you know, when they call rap for the day and we're going to go hit the bar and have a few drinks at the bar, you know, having a good time is then, but you know, there's not going to be any, you know, you know, fiddle fucking, you know, no fuck fuck games on set. Nope. While, you know, it's business. We're, it's, it's totally business. That's the thing. When you work with friends and you're trying to bring your friends up, you guys are all trying to come up. There's a fine line between, you know, a, a friendship and a business partnership. And I think um, like where I ran into issues, it's always been dude. Like if you want to fucking, if you, if we want to go to the movies, we can fucking go to the movies, bro, and enjoy our movie day. You know what I'm saying? But this is my fucking dream that we're talking about. I was just talking about that with Brian. He was showing me a movie back in the day that I told him about like eight months ago, a year ago. I think it was a year and a half ago he told me about this movie. And now we're finally sitting down to watch it. And he had no idea he told me about the movie. And you know why that is? It's because I've been so focused on cutting my circle out, on focusing what I need to focus on, trying to ramp up 80 to 100, 20 hours a week. And right. forget to go to the movies for the last year and a half and forget to do any of the shit that I used to do because that's what it's going to ask. This career is for a very small amount of people. If you're serious about it, you're, it's still, you better let go now and accept that you could fail because it might not work out. Don't have that mindset, but know that the odds are against you. So if you're serious, you've got to be willing to cut out the shit that you love to do, your vices, whether it's girls, whether it's partying, whether it's drinking, whether it's, Whatever your thing is, for me, I used to enjoy certain things, and I've audited that out as well as my circle. Well, so. let, me, let me add a caveat to that. The, the reason why I'm into the reason why I'm into movies is because I love movies. I've been watching movies since maybe I was six years old. I've seen, I can even remember seeing Star Wars: Return of the Jedi, which which is now Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi, but. You know, back in the day, it was the third one made. I can even remember seeing it in the theater when it was still in the, still in the theater. And so I chose to do that as a, as a career, filmmaking, TV and film production. Uh, I mean, with today's technology, it's live web streaming, it's podcasts, it's uh, music videos and commercials and things of that nature. But I love doing what I do. So if someone can make a career out of doing what they love to do, I mean, you've got a lot of people now that can open up a yoga shop yoga and teach yoga as a side hustle and those side hustles turn into like their careers because they love yoga right. and there's nothing wrong you're going to be more successful at doing the thing that you love to do in life as opposed to you might be successful at real estate and fucking hate real estate you might be a successful banker working at a at a city bank but you might fucking hate your job. And you could be paid, too. And you could be paid well. And you have a nice house and a nice car. And you fucking hate going to work the next day. And you got the nine-to-fivers that get shit-faced plastered every week and have barbecues. And they have huge beer guts. And they're losing their hair. At, uh, and they got these dad bods. Because they fucking hate life. They look like they've aged. 10 years past their age because they fucking hate life and they're miserable and you know, they're not really happy in their, in their marriage. Whereas you got the people that are making half the money that they make 
they're barely making ends meet. They can pay their bills. They can't really go out much. You know, they might be, uh, and they might have a few drinks while they're working at home, or they might have a few drinks to, to relax. But they're always at work, and they're picking up side work in the same field, and they're working 60 to 80 hours a week, grinding it out, gig after gig after gig, because they fucking love what they do. There have been weeks where I've worked 60, 70 hours a week because I just fucking love doing the shit that I do. Right. And then... And, and, the, when, and the money isn't always there up front. Like, I know for you... The money is not always there. I know you had to work, you know, every piece of video equipment there is known to man from when you just started to Discovery years ago yeah. to today. And the money, like and a hockey stick, it happens over time. It's still like... And, like, in my off time, I was driving Uber. Right. But then I... But in the last couple of years... And meeting Melissa, my fiance, in a way... Hey, Melissa, what's up? Hey, Melissa, what's up? <laughs> but in a way, you know, maybe, maybe patience somewhere falls into this to where I want to prove to her that her taking a risk on someone with such a high-risk venture career, I want to prove to her that it will be a success. So I work extra hard to prove to her, I want to, I work extra hard to even show off. I work extra hard to not only make ends meet because before when I was a bachelor, I only needed so much, but now that I'm in a relationship with someone who does support it and who does motivate me. Now I want to push that back. I want to pay that forward to her to prove to her that it was the right risk for her to make getting involved in me. And so now I'm like triple grinding it. And so I might work a gig and then I might drive Uber for another four hours and make extra cash to take her out or buy her flowers or, um, you know, take her out for a happy hour, whatever the case. And then only get four hours of sleep a couple of nights, five hours of sleep a couple of nights. I might be double booked two, three straight days. And then I might be off for two, three days. I'll be working from home on the side projects that I hope turn into like, these huge projects in the future. And it's, and, and it's these, it, it's this men, it's, it's the, it's a uh, blah, excuse me. The mentality. It's this mentality and, yeah. and it's this psychology of an, a healthy impatience, if you will, with myself to like every spare minute counts. I know I can get a good night's sleep on only five, six hours of sleep, but you gotta go to the gym because I got to look good as an actor hey, man. so I can get a bunch of gigs acting so I can meet some directors and producers that I can discuss with them some screenplays that I have because I'm also a screenwriter and filmmaker and producer extraordinaire. Hey, check out my screenplay. And then I get on a gig as a screenwriter and maybe a director. Oh, you're an actor. You play this detective, but you're also an assistant director and you're also a screenwriter. Yep. Check out. Here's, here's some stuff. Let's talk. So all to become like a full-time screenwriter and director but I'm in the gym for an hour and a half to be a good looking actor. Like, and another thing, and another thing that I always tell people is you have to do like 17 things just to strike gold at one. So, yeah, I think, I think Glenn's, Glenn's hitting on, on a good point. I think uh, not only does it take patience, it takes a little bit of honesty about what you really want. Because the woman that you're going to be with is going to have to be really, really understanding about your career goals. And shout out to all the women that have ever supported their man from the very get-go to the very middle to the very end that stuck by the honest ones who were courageous enough to really, really see it through, both the, you know, the females as well as the you know, males who are pursuing these careers or vice versa, the males supporting the females pursuing these careers in entertainment or entrepreneurship or business. Um, to stick by him because you really got to be honest. It's going to take courage and the patience has got to come from two people in Glenn's position if you're in a relationship. So we know, Sam, you and I um, have had to, you know, go through our ups and downs in, in personal life and relationships and not everybody makes it. You know, not everybody's going to understand. Not everybody's going to want to stick by. Um, so, you know, do you have any advice for those who are who are trying to live the double life, I'll call it, who want to have the personal life, the backup plan, and the big dream, and aren't willing to make the sacrifice in any of those areas that we talked about earlier, what is something you could send out to uh, some of the young, ambitious cats really looking to climb, but aren't quite ready to, to stop serial dating or, you know, give up some of the things that, you know, they hope the plan B will be? Like, what's a good 
tactic that you've used, you know, in your in your young career that has helped you resist the temptation of a plan B or a girl or, you know, somebody who's holding you back and you can't cut out? What are some of the, uh, you know, tactics you deployed uh, and executed that were difficult but have worked for you? You know what, man? There aren't any tactics. There isn't any, any secret. I honestly think that if you're willing to give up your dream for a friend or a girlfriend or a boyfriend or to go hang out with your buddies on the weekends and you obviously you don't you know you're not fucking good enough probably or you or deep down it's just not your dream it just isn't for you right. you weren't born to do this so maybe you need to find find out what what your calling is because at the end of the day it's it's just it's just not it's just not that hard it's very simple we 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 try to uh make these things so complex it's like if i want to be the biggest you know, bodybuilder in the world, then I have to go to the fucking gym and I have to eat. You know what I'm saying? There's no way around that shit. Like there's nothing, there is no excuse. There's nothing else that I can do. There's no one that can stop me from doing that. That's going to not motivate me to do that or inspire me to do that. It has to come from within. And we talked about this um, on the first podcast of the patient's podcast. Who are you trying to prove wrong? Who the fuck are you are we doing it for? Because if you're not if you're doing it for yourself, then you can say no to fractionizing and going out and bullshitting with your buddies or whatever the case is. But you know, if you're doing it to to prove someone wrong, then you might you might feel like you have all the time in the world. You might feel like, you know, I'll get to it whenever I get there. Do patience is not an excuse. For you, for for you not to be where you should be at. Yeah, you got to be impatient. In in the sense of like, you you can't not be do you can't be doing jack shit and say, oh, I'm just being patient. I'm just waiting for it to come. That's it. It's just not how how it's gonna work. There's no fucking strategy. There's no right. there's no mental manipulation. It's like either you're locked in or you're not. You're focused. You see the vision. You see the goal, or you don't. Now, are there going to be some days where you want to give up? Of course. I mean, everyone wants a, a, a free day. Everyone wants to relax. Everyone wants to wish that this was heaven, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? Everything isn't going to be blissful in this in this lifetime. And as long as you remember where where you come from, where you've been, how far you came, and you got to keep going. You have to understand the, the process. Now, at the same time, I want you to enjoy the process. You have to enjoy the journey because there is no amount of money. There is no amount of job. There is no amount of girls. There's no amount of cars. There is no amount of drugs or anything in this world that will fulfill you other than this moment right now. So you just need to be patient. You need to put in the work. You need to enjoy the process. So that means enjoying, hey, hey, guys, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stay in and read this book. Enjoy fucking reading that book, bro. Hey, guys, you know, I know like you guys are going bowling or into in, the bar later on this weekend or whatever. You know, what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to pass. You know, I'm going to hit the gym all weekend, you know, and enjoy hitting the fucking gym. Why? You know, don't stutter step. You have to be in oneness with your mind, body and soul. So at first in your mind, you're thinking I can do this. I can do this dream. OK, your soul is calling you to do it. That's the urge that you feel. You don't know why you want to do it. You don't know how you're going to do it, but you feel like you can do it. You know what I'm saying? And now your body has to be in alignment. So that means actually doing it, putting it in action and doing the things that it takes to get there. And there really just isn't any there really isn't any 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 tactics, guys. I just really think that, you know, it's it's just like, you know. It's like either you're going to settle for mediocrity or you're not going to settle at all. And most of us are willing to settle for mediocrity because over a girl, well, you know what? I, I, I really love her. You know, uh, she's, she's, you know, she's, she's really great to me, dude. 
there are many great women out there. She may not be a part of this dream. Maybe the story, maybe the, maybe her as a character and, and your story is done with. We keep trying to relive the same chapter over and over again, but we know how it ends. You know, oh, but he's, you know, he's been a good friend of mine. He's been a great friend. Okay, that's fine. I'm not saying you can't be friends with the guy. All I'm saying is if you want to go to the next level, he's not going to be your best friend. That's not going to be the these now the relationship you guys have right now isn't going to be the same relationship you guys have in the next five years if you want to go to the next level. And sometimes, you know, maybe that friend needs that. Maybe the girl needs that. You know, you don't you don't understand that. We don't understand that sometimes when we follow our, our blessings and our path and, and we follow our greatness, then we can allow others to do the same for themselves. You know, I have so many relationships, I feel like, in my life where I had to audit where she was holding me back, I was holding her back, I was holding him back, he was holding me back. We were all holding each other back, and we didn't even know it. You want to know why? Because misery loves company. Right. And as long as we were miserable together, who gives a fuck? You know, who cares if, if we're miserable? You know, at least I'm not miserable alone. At least we can, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not crying by myself. I'm going to cry with you. Right. And I just think, you know, that's a very pessimistic way to live. But of course, you know, this podcast it's is for the viewers. I think that's what this is about. I think that's the theme. I think trust in the process and knowing the safe way, the comfortable way. Honestly, that might, that might tell you a lot about your current circle of friends, your current ambitions in life. Like, a lot of us are hiding these secrets deep down and that calling that you're getting from your soul, that inner voice, you might be stifling it and not even knowing it. But when you do take a moment and you do really listen and you see how happy you are and you gauge, is this taking me down the path I want to go on? I think you're truly challenging yourself outside of your comfort zone. And I think a lot of people also get a little bit lost in the idea that I can have my cake and eat it too. I could be an aspiring entrepreneur, artist, business creative, whatever, and I could still do all these other things that I used to do, but that's not the case, Sam. You're young enough to know that now. Most people, you know, that make it know that, you know, but a lot of people that don't, don't realize that the biggest sacrifice in this process that we're talking about when it comes to patience is having the honesty and the courage to look at your choices and sacrifice in the places that you last want to sacrifice, be it a girlfriend, be it a job, you've got to make a new plan and you've got to reassess. Is that voice really calling you? Are you listening to yourself? And some people just might not have it. It's not for them. They don't want anything more than what they have. They're happy with their, their, their status quo lifestyle. And that's, look, there's plenty of people out there. God bless them. This is what they should be doing. But for those who really want something different, you have to be willing to know what's going on around you might work for them and it might not work for you but you've got to be brave and you've got to be courageous enough to ask the questions that matter the most those are the questions are going to answer the deepest you know whether it be pain or the most fulfilling calling in your lifetime and ignoring that can literally be one of the most painful experiences in your life so um you know i'm just i'm just curious if people out there really you know are enjoying their life? I really, 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 really ask people this question as much as I can. Um, and honestly, most people are too afraid. The cognitive dissonance associated with asking somebody something this real is too difficult to answer. And we're living in a time in history where a lot of people are afraid to tell the truth and they're afraid of transparency. But there's also a lot of creatives and businessmen who are saying right now is the time to be transparent, journal every step of your journey in this creative business entrepreneurial field, because what would it be valued at now if we had what Steve Jobs or Mark Cuban or, you know, Pac is a bad example because he was on film as a youngster when he was coming up in, uh, in his careers, had documented. They didn't have all the social media that we have now, but we do now. So if you're out there and you have this even tiny lingering feeling that you might want to be doing something more, start podcasting, start blogging, figure out like Sammy did, who you got to get in contact with buy a camera, start shooting shit, reach out to people that are making videos on a budget. And that video that you made, that uh, you put out a few weeks ago, Waffle Bat, it was done on a shoestring budget. But if you guys watch it, you'll see it looks as good as the last 30 years of film production because technology has shifted us forward so quickly that 
when Glenn started making movies, he didn't have any of this technology. Now he's in a great position, you know, succeed. Sam, you're in a great position to succeed because of your youth, because of your age. Um, putting us directly in the eyes of the consumer, direct from market, us, the creatives, the business people, directly to consumer. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity that really people don't realize is fully bestowed on us right now. And we barely begin to crack the seal on this. The internet is this direct channel market to the consumer. So I just think, uh, you know, this is one of the greatest times that people don't realize is just sitting at our fingertips one click away directly on our phones that we spend hours on. And you've never had it better than right now. I feel that. Glenn, are there, are there any, any, last things you want to say to inspire our audience out there also just just anything that you would want them to know about you um whether you're about your brand anything that you got coming up you want to go ahead and promote and put out there into the world um we would definitely love to hear it and shed light on that yeah uh i mean just uh just to cl- i guess close out you know i won't you know i won't pontificate too long but just to cl- <laughs> just just to close out real quick i mean for me it's about standards what are my standards what is what is my goal and what is required what are the ingredients and what are the requirements to meet said goal and so based on those requirements you have to have standards daily standards and the discipline to maintain those standards so if that's my standard is for uh, my for example my standards are six hours of sleep and get up gym for an hour in the morning internet emails and, and, and gig applications for about an hour every morning and then and then it's that daily gig based on whatever the schedule is so now okay i don't have to be at this gig for 12 hours so i'm gonna get on my computer and edit or write or pre-production whatever the side gig is this independent film or music video or or this uh, indie show that i got or this web series that i have and then go to the gig, come home, got to spend time with a lady, dinner, you know. Now we get, now we got a wedding coming up, so that's going to tack on some stuff I got to do at night, some wedding planning, whatever the case may be. Get up, and it's the same damn thing every day, seven days a week, eight days a week, 365 a year. That's the standards. Do you use vision boards, or do you have, like, boards that you plan out? No, I mean, I just, it's just by memory now. It's just, like, force of habit autopilot. now. Autopilot. It's autopilot, and it's... And they're going to be gym in the morning or gym at night but it's going to be six hours of sleep my body's on a set schedule now it's on a sleep cycle now to where if i get six hours i'm good i'm up now it's like what do i do and i and yeah sure i got like a list of i got like a to-do list or whatever and i got reminders i've got a google calendar you know when it comes to things that are you know involving others um but yeah i mean it's basically you know Everybody's dreams, some people's dreams are great and original and unheard of. Some people's dreams are not original at all. I mean, say someone wanted to become the next Mr. Olympia. That's not original at all. There's only about 13 or 14 Mr. Olympias ever. But it's not original. It's a phenomenal idea, but it's not original. But the requirements to do such a thing is a lot of hard work. And which require some outstanding standards and outstanding discipline to maintain said standards. To become a filmmaker, there's a lot of standards that go into that. And there's a lot of requirements and there's a lot of sacrifice and things of that nature. So, I mean, it's, it's just ready to be able, it's just ready for sacrifice, ready. And it's ready for maintaining discipline to maintain standards. I know filmmakers are some of the longest hours. Do you have any, uh, any projects? If you go to militaryentertainmentconsulting.com, I'm also part-time in the D.C. Army National Guard, one week in a month, two weeks in the summer. But that's given me the military background to where uh, me and a couple other colleagues, we do military consulting for films. Say someone needs to know how to salute properly or march properly or hold a gun because you'll see a lot of films. I've been on a lot of sets where someone does not even know how to hold a gun uh, tactically, like right. a cop or, or soldier, it would. just looks fake, yeah. And things, things of that nature, like how 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 a military uniform should look. So you got militaryentertainmentconsulting.com. dot com. You can find if you look up Dead On Pictures on YouTube. It's uh, youtube dot com slash Dead On Pictures. That's uh, that's my that's my YouTube. 
I'm on IMDb. If you just look up Glenn Nelson, you should see uh, the same picture that's on the podcast here. Instagram is at Dead On Pictures. Twitter is at Glenn Eric Nelson, Eric with a C. And yeah, so I mean, you can check out my links. Uh, the big, the, the new biggest thing that we have uh, actually, uh, Donnie's involved as well, is uh, it's a new super villain crime show that we have on YouTube called Rogues Gallery. First episode released last week. New episodes every Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. on YouTube. And uh, Donnie D actually is uh, one of our narrators for this uh, super villain crime show. And um, which I mean, I'm, as far as I know, it's 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 kind of uh, in the same vein as some of the characters in the DC and Marvel universes. So the the first the first season that came out takes place in the DC universe, and the, basically the premise is it's similar to America's Most Wanted, but as if within the universe if we existed within the universe of Superman and Batman, if we existed within the DC universe, what would those episodes of America's Most Wanted be about? And it would be about Joker, Riddler, Penguin, and, uh, you know, some of the characters a little bit more obscure than Joker and Riddler. Yeah, it's a, it's a new series on YouTube called Rogue's Gallery. The second episode's coming out this Wednesday. Check it out. I play Jeremiah Arkham, who's a criminologist, and he's always discussing. He, he's pretty much one of the uh, the on camera criminologists discussing each each villain, each super criminal of the uh, per episode. Donnie D is actually one of our narrators discussing said criminal. And it's a pretty entertaining show. Good deal. So check that out. Dead on pictures. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to episode two. Guys, trust the process. Cut out the people that aren't making your goals come one day closer. Uh, make sure you're being honest and, and have the courage to listen to, to that voice if it's really calling you out. Glenn, I do want to say thank you so much for being a special guest on the Patience Podcast. Thank you, Donnie D. Thank you guys for both of your time uh, for allowing us to go ahead and make this happen and provide a lot of value and insight and motivation to all of the doers and hustlers and People who are really trying to make a change in their life. You know, I really think this is a great, a great, great episode for them um, to uncover, especially those who are trying to get into the film industry, but just those all around. Again, guys, I go by Sammy G. You can go ahead and check out my music on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, SoundCloud, YouTube. That is Sammy as in S-A-M-M-I-E with the G. Um, you can follow me on social media at Sammy Jesus, S A M M I E G E S U S. It's Jesus spelled traditionally, except for the J. There is a G. Um, again, thanks to all of my supporters and friends and people out there that continue to keep this dream alive as far as my music goes, and as well as all of the supporters who have stopped and listened to the Patience podcast. Man, we really appreciate you guys for taking the time to listen. Um, and I really hope we were able to provide a lot of value for you guys today. All right, man. You guys have a great rest of your day. I appreciate you all. Much love. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you for having me. And this wraps up episode two of Patience, the podcast. Please stay tuned for episode three. We have a very special guest coming in. Like, subscribe, send us some emails. Tell us what you guys think. If there's some stuff you guys would love to hear about if there's something you hated about this co podcast let us know we want to hear about it so hit up glenn at dead on pictures and all of his socials and uh stay tuned guys we'll see you on episode three peace before I came up, man, they gave me no fucks I hopped up the Bentley, I caught her in short I got a new bitch, I'm not in it, that lesson She had it, the organ, but coming a duck I fucked in all of my new Nike stuff Took a shot of the handy, we light it, pull up My life like a movie, I had to glow up My life like a movie, I'm about to blow up Swear again, these lanes, swear to God I stay the same, and these bitches Always talking, swear they don't know my real name Drinking gin and kill the pain Roll those wishes every day In the morning, I was in New York But now I'm in LA, caught a Red, I be red eyes. Fuck it, I'm too damn high. I just need a pretty brunette with a tan line. I was on the West Coast, chilling on the beach. I was counting on my cash, feeling like I'm Weezy Wee. Yeah, yeah, I just left the yo. Told them be what they.
gon' be shit You can hustle in the streets Or you can hustle making beats Pussy so wet My bitch she just fucked up all the sheets Need another red bone For my niggas not for me I swear all my homies see To the penthouse from the streets And East Decatur making beats To the mountains making leaks I was serving making plays Cause what I'm from that's all they teach Yeah, pretty brunette Tell that bitch get on her knees Yeah, bounce that shit for me do that shit for Sammy J Yeah, them broke boys always talking Man, I'm who they wanna be I'm Atlanta and the summer Bitch, I always keep that heat Tinted windows, black on black Yeah, that new Benz AMG I was starving, let me eat I can't never go to sleep I've been up for way too long Bitch, I gotta get the cheese They say it costs to be the boss I pay the cost with all the cash Ricky Bobby to the money Got the first, you came at last Throw that pussy on the dash You heard my song and let me smash And you hating niggas broke I can see why you look mad I can't see the water stash And you can't never hold my stash Swear I'm never going back To selling J's up at that back With that Waffle House No more fucking whipping Waffle back I got money, I got God Man, my life can't be that bad With that Waffle House No more fucking whipping Waffle back I got God, I got money Man, my life can't be that bad No more whipping Waffle back No more no more whipping waffle back, 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 yeah, yeah.